Nigeria is a gift that keeps giving. Given for the wrong reasons, some analysts will insist. But with the dust settling on Edo gubernatorial elections, is Nigeria's electoral process under scrutiny once again? Plus, Nigeria now has a new chief justice, Kudirat Kekereku. Is she the game changer the judiciary has been waiting for? The EFCC and the Nigerian Correctional Services are embroiled in an allegation of bribery involving Idris Okunaya, also known as Bobriski, in a now viral expose by Mr. Ose, popularly known as Very Dark Man. Is it darkest before dawn in Nigeria? Are there more of can of worms to be opened in this country that we don't know where they are? This is the Eastern Eye. I'm Alex Obodo. <music> Welcome to the Eastern Eye. Here on Afia TV, it's a program that x rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. Our profuse apologies for the late takeoff of this program. But tonight, I have joining me on the program Chukuma Ifram Okenwa. He is the executive director, lead network Africa, and convener of the Igbo Stakeholders Forum. Thank you Thank for you joining so much. me tonight Thank you. on the Eastern Eye. So let's typically uh, look at the things the way they are, the Edo elections. I'm sure you've been following all the narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been counterclaims and charges. The APC are saying that they won fair and square, that they out-campaigned everybody, that their strategies were top-notch. But the PDP says that votes were manipulated. The PDP and the Labour Party, because they were the three major parties who participated in the poll. So we have three candidates who stood in for that election. Uh, Monday Okovalo, we have uh, uh, Obaseke, Igodalo, uh, 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 Aswe Igodalo, not Obaseke, Aswe Igodalo, and then the, the Labour Party candidate, uh, Osai Bovo Akpata, that is uh, the Labour Party candidate there. So it's been a mixed bag for them. A lot of them had high hopes going into the election. Some believe they would win. But finally, the man in the center of your screen there was declared winner by INEC. So the whole analysis from the APC is that they out campaigned and out worked everybody and won. But the PDP are saying, no, 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 something went wrong somewhere. So what's your analysis of that? So I think uh, before now, uh, the, the president was seen in a viral video where he, was, he promised it, uh, those stake, uh, states, stakeholders of, PD, of APC that I am the president, I, I, will, I will give you a do. You know, that's um, the way he rightfully put it. And um, uh, the, 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 what we saw uh, last uh, Saturday in a do, it's um, a true testament that under the current uh, leadership and, and structure and operations of um, INEC, uh, you know, it, it, it might be better to remove the eye you know, before the end, so that we know that it's now a, a National Electoral Commission um, or even an APC Electoral Commission and not an independent uh, National Electoral Commission because it is everything but independent. Uh, you know, there is clearly an uh, infraction of its guidelines uh, just to favor uh, a political party. It's clear. And uh, what we just saw is a Promax replay of uh, what happened in the presidential election. Um, the only thing is that uh, there was a little bit of hope, you know, when for three major reasons <laughs> in this particular election. So we have um, the INEC chairman coming up to reassure that, of course, the Beavers and the IRF, right, is going to be uh, fully put to play uh, to a very great extent, uh, unlike what we witnessed during presidential election, where for the presidential candidates, uh, the IREV was blocked. You know, results were coming in in real time and raised the high hopes of Nigerians. So there was the initial, uh, 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 like, claims of uh, some level of transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, during the collation, <laughs> it shows that uh, it was just a, a smoke screen, you know, that people's hopes were dashed. And clearly... Uh, INEC reneging on its uh, guidelines, and it, it really brings back the dark days of um, massive 
electoral rigging and uh, you know stealing of the people's mandate. Uh, the only thing is that uh, with this time around, you probably don't need to snatch the ballot boxes or use the security uh, mm -hmm. to clearly uh, victimize uh, voters of the opposition. This time around, you just buy the, the umpire, right? Yeah. And the umpire decides uh, the winner. And the next thing is, of course, the umpire can also advise you yes. to go to court. Go to court. I mean, that's the next narrative, isn't it? But before we get to that part, the argument here from all those who are involved in the election, that whatever happened, happened at the coalition level, that things were basically yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. At the polling units, the results were uploaded. But then when you get to the local government and state coalition centers, that's where the figures started changing. Uh, you know, so the big question is, in 2024, why do we, by we, I mean Nigeria in our election, why is it still important that people will carry physical results to a coalition center? It still marvels me. I, 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 I think about it every day and I can't, I can't put a finger on why. For a presidential election, for instance, you have to carry results physically to Abuja for it to be announced. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm thinking yeah. about it. The more I think about it, the less I understand. So why do you need to carry a result of an election that has been declared in a ward physically to another polling center, to another collation center, for it to be tallied? Please, so can you help me explain yeah. this? Is it, so, am I missing something? No, no, you are not. You know, in Nigerian sector, due to those are the hem of affairs, you know, sometimes they could um, tout so much about deploying digital means to enhance transparency. You know, but their dispositions clearly shows that they will always want to leave some gap for human interference and interface. We also see that in the case of transmission and transfer of result. How can you invest taxpayers' money to get these machines and only at the end of the day, it is an act now saying, come on, we've got the right to transfer and not to transmit, right? That clearly transmission means the only means is to use a digital means. And then at the end of the day also, our next right as empowered by the electoral act to set its own guidelines, now meant discretionary and not transparency. Because before then, I neck have told, you know, just like an umpire between two persons, you know, two boxers, you come before the match and tell people, see what, we are not going to tolerate, you know, giving the heat below the belt. But you've discussed with one of the party that the easiest way to get your opponent down is to hit him below, below the belt. And at the end of the day, you quote the electoral art saying, well, we are empowered by the law to set the guidelines. But the guidelines which you set and you duly informed all the stakeholders was not followed, was reneged. So whether it's from transmission to transfer, why transfer when it is digital and an open system, right? Like the IRF provides, then certainly there won't be room for human interference. So you need that aspect of transferring to come in. And that's also like what we call like lacuna that is left in certain well thought out policies. And at the end of the day, we pay dearly for it. So in the case of uh, the need for collation, there is absolutely no need for any country anywhere to come at the end of the day like something that is an open process. Anybody just from the comfort of the house could monitor digitally using their devices. At the end of the day, after following the process and seeing clearly the winners, you will now wait <laughs> for the real machine, human machine, the mercenaries, to now come with uh, scores that contravenes what clearly we know, how we all arrived at. At the end of the day, like we've also listened, because collation center arguments, counter arguments, oftentimes they are unable to show our workings. Oftentimes they are unable to show why in real time, have after due accreditation and voting process, a certain party is leading only at the end of the day. And the party is, uh, you know, uh, taking the, the second or the third. 
So it, it's clearly uh, a, a display of um, the, the lack of will to run free, fair, and credible elections. Mm. Credible means it has to be believable. You don't just do justice, but justice must be seen to be done. It's believable. When we say election is credible, people should be able to say, oh, come on, this is the man we voted for. And when that happens also, you should be able to also sometimes see that in the way the people rejoice. And I'm not talking about like sponsored uh, political uh, rejoicing, right? Which we sometimes we see. Like we know when uh, Mr. President was announced. <laughs> I mean, that's Wednesday. When we woke up and we had the result was announced by 3 a.m., it looked like, <laughs> you know, something happened, like something bad, right? Mm. It took like, after four years of shopping for legitimacy, you know, some people advise Mr. President, we, they never celebrate you. Yeah. And the next thing, they gathered some people to come and sing at the presidential villa, you know, do some jamboree just to recognize and welcome the emergence of a new Nigerian leader. Great. All right, we'll take a quick break here on the Eastern Eye. When we return, we'll delve into a lot more issues that are cropping up in the polity. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV. It's a program that X rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. You must be wondering why I'm, I was laughing. It's that Jonathan, he's on the other side. He won't believe what he announced from, through my ears, but uh, that's one of the things we get here. <laughs> just, uh, excuse me, uh, just cracked me up a bit. So, we're back to the issues. Um, one thing, we need, I needed us to tidy up the Edo thing before we move to the issue of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, we have an IREV that whatever is there cannot be tendered in court. Effectively, that's what it is. So why do we have IREV? Why do you have IREV? If what's an IREV cannot tally with whatever Mahmoud, whoever is the chairman of INEC, announces, whoever is presiding officer in the election or returning officer, what they're announcing cannot tally with what's on IREV. Why, why, do, you, why do we waste money to do all that? Uh, from Okinawa. We should abolish all that and, and go back to option A4, isn't it? So it's either we abolish or we get laws to back it up. You know, when laws back up a sin, that means um, it's admissible in the court because the court stands to interpret and not to make laws. Perhaps if um, the judiciary have some measure of a, a law-making pass, uh, it could be at his discretion to decide to admit uh, results reflected on the IRF. You know, but, um, you know, as, as, as the law is, you know, a blinded eye, you just want to look at you know, just what is clearly uh, written, you know, in the laws that guide the land, not uh, basically to judge based on uh, just strictly on merits or substance, you want to also look at the technicalities and you're looking at, you know, insisting most importantly on, the, on what is written because what is written will always be written. Uh, so I think uh, uh, for some politicians who are now on the receiving end of some of these things that is happening because politicians, they know themselves. So when the tide turns against you, you're crying far. But when, uh, you know, it's favoring you, like uh, we, a typical of um, Enugu and uh, Edo. So guys in Enugu were rejoicing, come on. <laughs> I mean, uh, the level of uh, mass turnout on paper on announcement as against the real turnout in the local government election. Uh, some of us that uh, monitor the election are yet to like, reconcile, mm. while in some local governments, you know, arguably. You, well, I mean, know. but, but in, in fairness, because I moved around yes. quite a bit. I was in uh, Kano East and then okay. Kano West, and the places I saw, people okay. were there. Uh, but, you know, I, yeah, I, 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 was only, I, was, I was only in a few places. I yes. wasn't everywhere. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm actually talking about in the measure. Of, are you aware that there are some local government chairmen announced with over 100,000 votes, right? That's quite a lot. 50,000 votes. That's quite a lot. I work with people, I work with numbers. When I see 100 people, I know. When I see 200, when I see 5,000, yeah. I know. And I can beat my chest. 
that there are some local governments without of the 3,000 turnouts. Yes, I moved around pretty very much well. But when we began to see the result, we were like, come on, mm. this is interesting. You know, parties that demanded to see the result. Yet no IRF, no BIVAS. I mean, this is not INEC coordinating election. It's NSEC at this time. But the guideline is show results. Display those materials. Let people know that it's not been tampered with. And then the process can start. But what we keep getting is that uh, the materials, the result will come later, right? And at the end of the day, with our party agents having an opportunity of endorsing the process, saying, yes, we're here, as the rule demanded, it was counted before us, and we, it was stamped and signed. This is our signatures. All of, all of a sudden, we saw results flying out. So why PDP was rejoicing in Enugu, they were weeping. <laughs> <laughs> weeping in a, in a in a in a Meanwhile, the only difference now is who is benefiting. But the process is similar, yeah. right? So, so, so what typically happens to politicians is that today, if, you know, there is a kind of, um, you know, you, you've got the flip side, right, of the coin. You begin to shout far, no, oh, this is, this is not right. Now, what's the only thing that can then ensure that it doesn't matter the side where you are, it doesn't matter whether the pendulum fits you, is to come together, create sustainable laws, make policies that ensure that irrespective of who you are, if you fail, you fell out. If you succeed, you succeed gallantly. Gallantly. Yeah. And you know that you have the people's mandate. And certainly such things help to enhance accountability. Because okay. when you know the people voted you in, you want to like, you know, uh, live up to the expectation. But when it does appear that these people didn't put me there, apart yeah. from that, you don't owe them anything. You're also a bit aggressive because to you, you just feel like this person might just be feeling they didn't put me there. Sure. How did I get in here? But I'm here after all. And I just have to do my own bit and go. Absolutely. So let's talk about the new Chief Justice of Nigeria. Um, we have, when I have um, Justice Kekereku, Kudirat Kekereku, that's her name, that's her in the picture there. So, I mean, from what we've heard already, they say she's disciplined, she has integrity. But then, that's just a true test of the CJN's integrity when high-profile cases, especially political cases, get to the Supreme Court. What, where will you lean to? Will you lean towards the people or towards technicality? That's the issue because yesterday, I mean, we, we have that video. I'm not, I'm not quite sure we can pull it up now where she was responding to the Senate, uh, I think two days ago or so, uh, when she was cleared and confirmed by the Senate. And uh, I mean, they drilled her for two hours. I mean, you have to give it to her. Brilliant with the responses. But then, it's in showing the workings that will know whether you have integrity, that you are a disciplinarian, that you, are, you have all that. The post of the CJN will test all that, isn't it? Okay, so see. You see, we actually have issues um, with the current CJN. It's just coming to, it's too early for someone to try to create that uh, suddenly past. Uh, because some of the high-profile cases she's been involved in being political cases speaks otherwise. At least we know it was in the public domain. You know, how they for a certain time she wanted to visit the U.S. And they turned down on her visa, saying, we're due to corruption, we can't grant you visas, right? And apart from that, we know that the magic that was done in Imo State, right? I mean, she midwived that particular process. And some of the statements she's also made just within this particular period of um, you know, being sworn in as a CJN suggests that uh, she may not really focus on the things that matter the most, like uh, the recent thread of trying to go after you know, those that make uh, social media comments against the judiciary, right? So the fact you have judiciary and you want everybody to follow as the court pleases, now means in a democracy, we should be silent. We don't have the right to interrogate government. There are three arms of government. If executive is receiving water, water. The, the legislative is also deserving of it. And the court is also not free from public scrutiny. 
What makes you think because you went to study law, and after some time, you now have the privilege of uh, sitting to, you know, adjudicate, adjudicate cases. Whatever thing you say, including those of us that didn't study law, we say, my Lord, as the court pleases. Mbana. There should be interrogation. Everybody that is a public servant, right? You are in for, you qualify for public scrutiny. And that means that even those that didn't read law, there are certain things they expect. Minimum standards. Like till today. How can someone explain that a governor, or not even a governor at that point, but a candidate with fourth position, less than 100,000 votes, you had two that had over 200,000 votes, another one with over 100,000 votes, it was now the fourth that was mat mag mat magically, that is mat magic, mat magically under the purview, right, of the, 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 the current uh, chief justice of Nigeria that is trying to make us you know, give us high hopes. I wouldn't take that uh, anything more serious than when uh, the current, uh, 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 is it Mahmoud, right? Our next yeah, chairman. Mahmoud, if yeah. he comes up anytime again, more elections will still come. Nigerians are not agitating he should leave the position. So he will still conduct more elections. And follow the trajectory. Every election he will say, we'll use BFAS, we'll use IRF. Believe him at your peril. He's just won you. And when he gives you that high hope, he's actually pre to prepare you for the real empowers. And so what is actually happening in Nigeria shows lack of institutional integrity. And like usual, we, we ask, who is taking responsibility? Who is facing consequences? Until at any point, these two issues are addressed. Like if this thing doesn't work, who should be held responsible? If it doesn't work, what are the consequences? And any system that is serious that wants to work must have consequences, must have people that are taking responsibilities. You don't just leave it like that because, I mean, when you, when you have like a goat that is owned by the community, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the, you know the fate of that goat. That's right. That's how they was put it. Yeah, that's right. So um, let's talk about uh, one of the biggest issues online now, <laughs> uh, where you have... Uh, it's uh, about three big persons that are known in Nigeria. One is a, a blogger. He's known as Very Dark Man, but his name is Mr. Ose. I think Martin Ose. That's his real name, Very Dark Man. And then Bob Risky, Idris Okune. That's uh, his alias is Bob Risky. And then Files the Bad Guy, the, the, the son of uh, Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria. So there's this allegation, the expose by um, Very Dark Man, the, an audio he put up in his uh, page saying all sorts uh, that apparent leaked conversation between um, Bobriski. Uh, just pardon me to call him Bobriski for purposes of this conversation. Bobriski was boasting how he paid this person and paid that person to get VIP treatment when he was supposed to be serving a prison sentence, a prison term in prison. But apparently he got an apartment somewhere and was cozying in there, and uh, you know, and he paid people upwards of 15 million. A lot of monies were mentioned, and a lot of people in the value chain were palms were greased, allegedly, allegedly, has to be said. So now, uh, fire and brimstone is coming out. So, files the bad guy issued uh, an ultimatum to him to retract within 24 hours. I think that 24 hours elapsed, is elapsing this night, and. Um, also, uh, Idris has denied that the, the that's uh, Bobrisk is denying that the, take, the recording in question is fake. So, the Minister of Interior, Olubimitunjo, just says, you have to investigate this. Everyone says there has to be an investigation. So, what says thou? So, 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 citizen, so when uh, the, the so called Bobrisky came out of the so called prison, uh, people like us and many Nigerians were like, uh, this prison is worth experiencing because you could imagine his skin, you could imagine how fresh. And I, for one, knowing the possibilities that everything is possible in Nigeria and that he wouldn't also be like the first. We are like, you could have someone allegedly in prison, like cruising, enjoying, right? And after the time, you also have like a sort of like the kind of celebration that he 
the reemergence of uh, Bob Risky in the public sphere. So I personally, I mean personally, I don't have any doubt about that story. But of course, what you, you could not reasonably expect, it, expect at the moment is damage control. It's normal. And looking at the people that is involved, right? I mean, uh, when, 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 when perhaps he made that comment, which was captured on record, uh, there was no intent to put it out there in the public domain. So even sometimes you could have a situation where you have to issue disclaimer to your own word, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you said something that you never knew on record. Yeah. And they brings it and say, is this your voice? You are like, no, it's artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. right? No, so it's AI. It, yes, it's AI. That's not you my know? voice, it's AI. So, <laughs> I mean, we've seen a case where you know, the, the Gandhi Jaden, you know, doling out some, you understand, allegedly, doling out some dollars. And when uh, President Buhari then was accosted to give explanation of that, and he said, well, that these days there could also be video shop, right? Mm. <laughs> you know, people try to, like, use video, uh, create your image. Carry your head yes. and put in another person's shoulder. Yes, you know, that kind of thing. So, so but the fact there is that there are certain kind of things that you could just discuss as a private matter. When it comes public, even your own self. So it now behooves on all those that is involved to see how to manage this. But by the time we further interrogate, and of course the, the Minister of Interior is in a better position. So let them tell us the prison. And in you know when the exchange, I felt the exchange was done. Record that just for somebody that is meant to spend some days in the prison, not up to a year. And days, I call that days. And then all of a sudden, in one prison, he was moved from that prison to another, if you can recall. <laughs> that was where the exchange happened. So I mean, the moment they say, ah, they are moving this guy, what I just imagine in my mind, mm -hmm. knowing being old enough to know Nigeria well and to predict this country. So let the Minister of Interior, if they, if, if they tell him, if the controller in charge of uh, 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 correctional services so, will so, say, this is where we reminded him. Let them come there and interrogate. Let him mm -hmm. show us the inmates. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That stayed with him. Yeah. Or whether maybe they began to build like a deluxe facility. But we, we, we have about three minutes to go. Yes. Do you think heads will roll in this? Do you think something tangible will come out of this, out of the investigation, whatever it is they call it? Well, well, uh, 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 not, 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 uh, not, not under the current trajectory that we've seen in the nation. You know, it, it's very clear that at the moment, Nigeria is not yet ready for that uh, kind of change, revolutionary change, right? You know, that we want where you are, because everything actually rises and falls on the leadership. The owner of this administration is Tinevu. If he says, discontinue this case, you just have to stop there, right? If from the body language also of the leader, you can understand that the leader is not ready to tolerate any nonsense. Everybody also adjusts with that particular uh, stance. But for even for there to be accusation and a possibility of that happening, really shows you that uh, the government, just like in the last administration, may only be playing gallery to anti-corruption, anti-graft, corrupt practices, and all the rest. But there is no real um, commitment to tackling corrup cor corruption. Mm. I mean... In just a minute, do you think Namde Kranos' debacle in court will end soon? The, the, the judge says, I'm no longer handling your case. What's next for him in, in just one breath? Uh, yeah, what, what I, I, I think is that South Lee's leaders should push more for political uh, solution, yeah? Because I don't see any way in the, in the legal pathway. In fact, any judge that may want to accept that case, you know, you, you, you want to be very careful. Uh, I, can, I can just imagine all that... Uh, Binta went through, mm -hmm. where maybe like you have like conflicting situations. Sure. You want to do what is right based on the laws you know, and then but then uh, politicians that, that put you there won't let you to you know to do the right thing. They, they could tell you, okay, so so the next I join this case maybe to Senator, right? Indefinitely. And you begin to like ship these cases and it's all the same like four years it's already passed down the line. And, you know, it's also interesting to know that this case, the first half, started as, as far back as 2015. Come on, by next year it will be 10 years. Mm -hmm. Trying a particular matter of someone agitating for his region, right? 
Is there no more right to self-determination? These are rights enshrined, not just by international conventions, but in the Nigerian constitution. So they should be able to look at it and like he rightly pointed out, the things you charged me of, you cited it largely happened in another man's land. That's so right. what then is the jurisdiction? Absolutely. You know, so, so, so I think uh, the Nigerian government should be able to look into this. That's a good place to live in. And I have to thank you immensely. Chukuma from Okenwa, Director, Executive Director, Lead Network Africa, and of course, convener of the Concerned Igbo Stakeholders Forum. Thank you You're for welcome. your perspectives on the Eastern Eye tonight. And that's the program for tonight. Up next is Nka with Rochelle. My name is Alex Obodo. Thank you for watching. Good night. Thank you.